Welcome back to Monroe Live. And today I would like to talk about some safety devices within the vehicle. Now, safety is actually a passion of mine. Uh, how we integrate these safety devices through materials in different zones, how they interact with the occupant are all things that I am passionate about. And unfortunately, many people don't give them the consideration that they are due. So for this, we're not really speaking about any specific vehicle. I want to give a general overview of the components and a little bit of history. So we're gonna start in 1973. Now there were patents for airbags going back into the 50s. However, none of those were actually functional. They didn't work in vehicle, never made it to a vehicle. But in 1973, Oldsmobile, the first passenger airbag or driver airbag was introduced in a passenger vehicle that was actually for sale. This was as an option. At that time, General Motors used to use Oldsmobile as their test vehicle. If they had a new product or a new feature that they weren't really sure was going to be fully developed, they'd throw it in Oldsmobile first before they would put it into a Cadillac or a Buick. And that's what they did with airbags. Started out with Oldsmobile and then was an option for Cadillac and Buick. But the problem was since it was an option, it's left up to the customer to purchase them, ask for them, and nobody was. So through that decade, the airbag died. The airbag did come back and then started to be a required feature. Now we're gonna jump up to 1990. 1990 was the first time, first recorded instance, of a crash between two vehicles that both were equipped with airbags. They were both the same model vehicle, 1989 Chrysler LeBaron. Um, that crash was the first known head-on crash between two vehicles, both of them equipped with airbags. Now, why do I say that? Because 1990 really wasn't that long ago in the grand scheme of things. Knowing what we have done with safety devices in the past 30 years is pretty impressive how prevalent these things have become. So I wanna talk about some of the individual features. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about, driver airbag. Driver airbag packed in its chute, driver airbag cover. So what are some of the features here? Have you ever unfolded a fitted sheet that you just purchased from the store? I guarantee that you were never able to refold it and put it back in the packaging it came into. This airbag, the fold of the airbag is incredibly technical. In order for this thing, to, this thing to fit within its profile, the folding of airbags, I've seen some of the equipment that does it, it is very impressive. And every profile is different, so they have to be individually fit for the vehicle and the profile of the vehicle. Now the way the bag is folded also plays in the deployment. That fold captures the gas as it is igniting providing the initial force that is breaking through this airbag cover and then fully deploying. So this airbag cover, what do we see here? We have a plastic airbag cover, we have a bezel and then a trim emblem. I've tried to highlight the actual tear line. You can see that this is kind of an H. Two sides that split, splits through the middle kind of hinges at these points here. All right, so look at this split right here. This is the heat stake for that trim ring that's wrapping around. This tear line splits right through the center of this piece of trim. So during deployment, that trim must snap, must break. Now there's an awful lot of force here, so of course it's going to break through this uh, cover. But the problem that you have is it's not just that it breaks through the cover, you really need a controlled break. It must break through and deploy in a controlled manner, also within the right amount of time. And we're dealing with milliseconds that all of this stuff is happening. So we have a passenger airbag. This would be inside of the instrument panel. Now the airbag manufacturer that makes the driver airbag, they might make the entire component, but the passenger airbag, this fits to the instrument panel. So if I have a wrapped instrument panel, if I have a plastic mold and cover instrument panel, someone else has to take over all of the weakening on those components and the airbag manufacturer is left with designing this component. Now, where does that become a problem? Well, 
this is a problem. All of these systems and all of these materials must work with each other um, for the safety of the vehicle. This airbag manufacturer, if they decide I'm going to sell this airbag to this customer, but that customer is responsible for integrating it into their system. That's an awful lot of trust because let's say there was a problem with these deployments. All right, are you allowed to point fingers? Can the airbag say, oh no, that's the instrument panel. And the instrument panel say, oh no, that's the airbag. <laughs> no, you can't. This airbag manufacturer would be subject or suspect for every airbag that they produce. And for the airbag manufacturers, those are in the hundreds of millions to billions of product, not dollars per year. So hundreds of millions of products could then be suspect and subject to recall if this did not work with the IP that someone else had to design. That's why you cannot just buy these off the shelf. You can't say, I'm gonna build my car and oh, let's go and get an airbag for someone and put it in my vehicle. No, they won't sell it to you because they're not gonna trust you if you have not developed and built the entire system to work within that airbag. So then we have a knee airbag. Now this knee airbag is not covered by the IP. This one has its own cover. It's kind of hidden in a, a non-viewable location, which is why they can get away with that. Seat side airbags. Seat side airbags which hook into the seat structure and then into the seat cover. All right, why are we putting those in the seats? Let's look at the vehicle body. The driver airbag, of course, it's right in the steering wheel. The passenger airbag is mounted to the IP. Why are we not mounting those side airbags into the B pillar? And honestly, sometimes people will, some companies do, but here's the problem. If I put the side airbag in this B pillar, it's going to be in a constant fixed position, but the seat that you're sitting in, that is not a constant fixed position. You can adjust and you can move that seat anywhere you want. So now you're outside of the optimal zone for that airbag if you move the seat too far forward, too far rearward, which is why we try to put side airbags on the seats themselves. So let's take a look at this seat and the cover. This side airbag will be bolted directly into the seat structure, but not like that. This pouch is sewn into the seat cover. This is the housing for the airbag. This is the same type of material that the airbag is made of. When this airbag deploys, we do not want it deploying underneath the cover. We want all of that force to go out through the seam. So, you will notice that there is one seam that is capable of tearing when this airbag goes off. That will be this seam here. Now, it is the join seam which is hidden underneath that is going to tear. I need that to tear, okay. This is where it gets to be a problem, specifically for aftermarket. You'll know, especially for people who drive trucks, when you get in and out of your truck, you wear out the side bolsters of those seats quite regularly. So you wanna have them repaired. In order to take this seat cover off to repair it, you must also remove the airbag. You must also re-sew this pouch into the new cover using an appropriate thread that can tear during airbag deployment. Most aftermarket companies that do these repairs do not wanna take on that liability they do not have the proper machines for validating the stitching. So they get very, very scared whenever they have to work with a seat that has a passenger side airbag. But it's not just that airbag. There's more to this entire system. The seat belt. When it comes to safety, the seat belt is your most important safety feature. If you do not wear your seat belt properly, these airbags, can harm you more than help you. This seat belt, 70% or more of your safety is coming from this belt itself. 
all of these airbags working together may add an additional 20% of safety on top of this 70, but without this belt, those have no function. But there are explosives in the belt as well. There's an explosive here, and there's an explosive here. In a crash, this is sucking that belt very tight to your chest and holding you back. Again, for your safety, we wanna hold you in that seat, hold you in that seat nice and tight. So your seatbelt is providing the first thing. It blows to suck you back and hold you in the proper position. All right, then your airbags will blow. When your airbags go for the driver and the passenger airbag, we want those to inflate but then already start deflating by the time you smack into them. It's not the same for the side airbags. How do we know that the seatbelt, or not the seatbelt, but the airbags have to deploy themselves? You know, when you have nothing sitting in your passenger seat, you see the airbag that says passenger airbag off, or when someone sits in the seat and they don't buckle their seatbelt, or if you throw your work bag on the passenger seat and it starts blinking at you, you're not wearing a seatbelt, it's this thing's fault right here. This is a pressure mat. It senses the amount of pressure that's in, on top of the seat. This is part of a logic system. It senses that there is something on the seat and then it tries to figure out the weight of the thing that is on the seat. So if it senses that there's something on the seat but it's light, this is a child or this is a child safety seat, I don't want that airbag to deploy. It's gonna cut it off. If it senses that there's something on the seat and, it's, and it is within the right weight, it's gonna deploy. So think about that logic. When that car is initially having its impact, the sensors go off and say, we got hit, we got hit hard, we're gonna to have to do something about it. We're gonna deploy the airbags. Wait a minute, are we gonna deploy the airbags? Is the sensor sensing that there is someone in that seat? Yes. Is that person within the range? Yes. Okay, we're gonna deploy the airbags, but we need that occupant to be sucked back nice and tight against that seat. Seatbelts, deploy, suck you back. Airbag deploys, cushions your hit. All of these things must work within sequence and honestly within 30 milliseconds of each other. If something is out of sequence, if you are already moving too far forward when that seatbelt deploys and then yanks you back, it can harm you. If the airbag deploys before this pulls you back, that airbag can <laughs> drive your nose into your skull. All of these things must work together in order for you to be safe in a vehicle, which is why it is so critical that all of these parts must be designed as a complete system. So this is a passenger airbag, and I wanted to open this up because I wanted to show how the folding affects the airbag. Now, I can't actually inflate this. You're not going to see how that is happening. So let's open it up somewhat slowly and see what all we can see. So we have protective flaps. This is basically just for shipping, but this is just loosely sewn. So this is gonna tear open during the deployment. The bag itself has a very unique fold designed for this bag. The way it is going to unfold and unwrap and then present itself to the occupant. Now, passenger airbags and driver airbags are unique. You'll see right here, there are vents. When this gas is inflating this bag, there is a vent that is going to release that pressure. So when it's fully deployed and your face hits this, you don't wanna hit something that is rock hard and deployed. It needs to be able to give. So driver airbags and passenger airbags have that. Now that's important for a front-on collision or rear-end collision uh, because normally there's only one major impulse there. But for a side airbag, that's a little different. If you're being hit from the side, you have a much more likelihood of having multiple impacts within one accident. You're hit from the side, you hit a wall. You're hit from the side, you're hit by another vehicle and you move back the other direction. Or you're in a rollover and you're going to be impacting that side multiple times. Side airbags, curtain airbags, 
are normally developed to remain inflated longer than a passenger or a driver airbag would be. Unfortunately, this uh, seat is uh, sitting rather high and rather far forward, so it's a little awkward for me right now. But when you are in your vehicle, you are literally surrounded by explosives. That is what these are. Your passenger airbag, your knee airbag, your side curtain airbags, your seat side airbag, and then your seat belt explosives as well. Repeated throughout the vehicle, driver's side, passenger side, rear seat airbags, depending on your configuration. Again, this seat is sitting rather far forward right now. So if I were to have an airbag mounted in the B pillar back here, it would not give me as much protection as an airbag that's mounted in the seat itself. So let's go see what that looks like when a seat airbag deploys. So most safety manufacturers for airbags, seat belts, and all that stuff know that their product only has one chance of working and one chance of working right. So they put a lot of effort into making sure that their system works. It can't work some of the time, most of the time, it must always work. So let's find out if this actually works. So you'll notice that this seat side airbag does not really cover a large area. It's really only going to protect my body. And that is only my body if I am strapped in with the seat belt in the proper position. If this airbag is going off and I was not wearing my seat belt, I'm headed into the A pillar. I am not going to be protected in the side impact by this seat side airbag. So let's look at this torn seam. You'll see it tore right at the stitching. The stitching of the seat cover itself gave way, but that sewn in chute that we talked about is still intact. It has prevented this airbag from going underneath the cover and it has allowed it to deploy in its proper position, proper orientation. Again, it only has one chance to work and this works in conjunction with the sensors in front of the vehicle during the crash, the occupant detection, occupant classification system saying, yes, this is an instance where the airbag needs to deploy, the seatbelt, which is firing, holding you back into the seat in the right time for the seat airbag to deploy, the passenger airbag to deploy, for your moving body during crash to hit it at the right moment. Very, very technical, very hard to def design all of these components to work in conjunction with each other within that 30 milliseconds. It's not something that just happens. It is a lot of work. Now for electric vehicles going into the future, I think it's impressive and it's wonderful that we have new types of drivetrain, we have new types of energy storage, but what cannot be forgotten is all of these other systems that are honestly still being worked on. Designing this is not for the faint of heart. It is an awful lot of work. And if you do not give it the proper amount of care and attention, this can lead to disaster. So thank you for watching Monroe Live.